electric vehicles are no good because you only do about 20 miles in them there's no point having battery storage at your house because the batteries only last for like two years and they have to go into landfill and they never pay themselves back and you can't have solar in the UK either because it's always dull and crappy this is Spectrum Geeks my name is Dale Pearson and this is my four year update on my solar PV and battery install here in Worcestershire UK So back in 2018, I decided that I was gonna take the plunge and finally get solar PV put onto my roof. And I was also gonna get a some form of battery storage anyway, so that when uh, in the summer months when we're generating more than enough solar, and we didn't have electric vehicles at the time, that was a, a thing to come in the future, but we obviously didn't wanna give all that energy back to the grid. And we're getting right in at the end of the feed-in tariff as well. So pressure was on a little bit to try and find uh, a good installer to meet our needs. So part of our requirement was, or at least our goal, was to be able to generate the same amount of solar over a year as we kind of currently pulled from the grid per year. Obviously that's not gonna happen the same every month because obviously in the winter it's not so good. In the summer it's gonna generate more than um, we can use. Uh, but basically before um, we had solar, we used to have an annual electricity consumption of 7,527 kilowatt hours that we used to pull from the grid and our annual gas consumption was 11,718 kilowatt hours and our annual petrol spend was 3,200. The reason for the relevance of the petrol spend is part of also going solar was to be moving our cars uh, over the years to electric vehicles as well and hoping that in the summer months we could charge our cars from solar, which is why that's in there. And just for clarity, we use electricity for everything, uh, well, before we had solar, apart from heating and hot water. So we do have an immersion heater, but we never used that because we just used um, gas all the time and then obviously gas for the heating in the winter. So that's what our, what our requirements were. And I think I spoke to about seven different installers, had different quotes. But in the end, I went with Forever Green Energy and went with them for two reasons, really. One, they actually listened to the system that I wanted, as opposed to making assumptions and telling me, oh, you only need a three kilowatt system, that'd be fine. Um, they could also use the uh, equipment I wanted. I put a lot of research in. I wanted a solar edge inverter. Ideally, I wanted a Tesla Powerwall too. Um, and they basically could, could provide that for me and their price was pretty competitive it wasn't um one of the cheapest ones it was kind of the mid to high end but was confident that they would be able to do a good install and they had lots of information as to how they thought the system would perform over around 30 years um, and also what the payback might be and things like that so that's why i decided to go with forever green energy and again the system has performed really well as we kind of discuss in this uh, four year update so in terms of a quick refresher on what we have for uh, our kind of energy setup. So we have 30 300 watt Pimar solar panels on our roof. It's kind of southeastish kind of facing, but works uh, really well. Pretty much no shading, a little bit of shading in the winter, but uh, connected to that, we have the solar edge optimized on the back of all the panels, which linked in to the uh, solar edge inverter so it's a nine kilowatt solar array coming back down to a six kilowatt uh, solar edge inverter that's kind of what we got signed off by the dno so what we can have an ability to be able to put back into the grid etc and we also have the tesla powerwall 2 with the generation one gateway so no islanding or a backup capability just basically the ability to store energy from the solar that we don't use there was a little bit of a delay on the battery I think it's about two or three months I had to wait. So in addition to that, also spec'd up the My Energy Eddy to be able to heat the hot water with surplus solar. And as part of that, also got the My Energy Harvey, which is basically a wireless CT clamp. So that's all that came part of the, uh, the package that I bought from Forever Green Energy. And then a little bit later, when we got the electric uh, vehicles, I got the uh, Generation 1 My Energy Zappi 
and the Myangi hub, but that wasn't included in the um, original Forever Green install, but just give some clarity on where we are and how that kind of ties in with our payback. Also, in addition to that, we moved to Octopus Energy onto their Go tariff. And the main reason for this is having the off-peak ability to be able to charge up during off-peak from the grid at a much reduced rate. And obviously, if energy prices have gone up over the last four years, um, that's even more valuable. Obviously, the cost of that off-peak off uh, has gone up as well. But again, increased saving over the peak costs. So that kind of brings us up to date on kind of how much energy we were aiming to be able to generate the system that we have and kind of why we were going to it. So here in year four, so we literally just passed um, August 24th, actually almost a month past, I'm a bit late doing the video, um, but that's when this kind of is looking. 24th of August each year, I do my kind of annual sums to see how the payback is going and that brings up to date for year four now. So in terms of what the system was expected to be generating, I have three figures. Basically, Forever Green Energy gave a good kind of breakdown of how the system will perform over, I think it was 30 years, kind of trying to calculate in degradation of the system. Obviously, over time, uh, the panel efficiency will decrease, the inverter efficiency will decrease. So they try to calculate, um, obviously, optimal in year one and then slow degradation throughout the years. So I have the uh, expected expectation of generation from Forever Green Energy in year four. Then I have uh, the annual generation expectation using the Solar Edge planning app, and then my own kind of estimate. But again, those two last ones, uh, mine and the Solar Edge Energy one, don't factor in any degradation. So probably a bit more of a margin of error in that. For um, Forever Green Energy's expectation of how the system will perform in year four, they would uh, hope that it would generate at least 7,459 kilowatt hours. The Solar Edge uh, planning uh, app said that it should generate around 8,435 kilowatt hours of energy per year. And my estimation is that the system would generate around 7,723 kilowatt hours of energy per year. So that's kind of what we're hoping for in this uh, year four update. And obviously we'll building into the payback pot. And I think the original expectation of what this system would take to pay back from Forever Green Energy was around nine and a half to 10 years, factoring obviously the rate of inflation of energy costs. No one could have foreseen the, the massive spike in energy costs that we're having here in 2022 leading into 2023. So it's probably a given that things will uh, pay back a little bit quicker. But part of the reason why you might say that's a, a higher, you know, 10 years of payback is you know, a, a larger number. That is mainly because of the fact that I had the battery. The solar panels themselves were pretty much half the cost of the total insulation. The battery was the other half. So if you just had solar on its own, I still think you should still always have a battery. Um, but again, that's part of the reason why the increase was a bit higher. And when uh, after the first year, of having the solar panels, if you look back to the videos, but I think we were estimating uh, around 10 years and nine months was actually how long the system would take to pay back. But let's look at where we are in terms of the generation and the usage in year four. So for the year, um, the solar system generated 8,199.96 kilowatt hours of electricity. We utilized 7,304.16 kilowatt hours of energy. All the rest of that went back to the grid. So that's after us heating hot water, charging cars, filling up the battery. That's surplus that goes back to the grid. Um, and our gas usage was only 4,674.64 kilowatt hours. So obviously much less than what it used to be before we had um, solar. And actually equates uh, in this year based on current costs 518 pounds and 44 pence of saving just gas alone over what we used to use um, back before we had solar like i mentioned we still get um, some money from the feeding tariff and so for the feeding tariff we got paid 353 pounds and 83 pence for the year for our generation our deemed export we got paid 237 pounds and a penny and then obviously all that electricity that we generated and put into the cars and the battery and the hot water and obviously powering the house that we didn't have to buy from the grid equated to at um, 
current costs over the year. This is still on our fixed tariffs, not the ludicrous costs that we have at the moment. I think it's about 30p is what these costs are based on. Um, 2,248 pounds and 22 pence is the equivalent of what we would have paid over the year if we bought it from the grid. So the total four year payback that goes um, into the solar payback pot without gas is 2,839 pounds and six pence. Now we should add the gas in on top of that, in my opinion, because obviously we're using less gas. Now we're heating the hot water uh, with surplus solar and also electricity off peak if we need to. So add to that an extra 518 pounds and 44 pence, as already mentioned. And here in year four, uh, my wife and I both have electric vehicles, which is also why our electricity consumption has gone up, but now no petrol costs at all either. So it used to be £3,200 a year that we'd spend on petrol. Obviously, fuel prices have gone up as well, which we're not, not kind of calculating an increase. But again, so add on top of that again, at least £3,200 a year um, that we wouldn't now have to pay for petrol because we're using electric vehicles. Now, we're getting to this in a little minute. Uh, you're going to argue that electric vehicles are expensive and blah, 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 blah. I'm not factoring in that cost. So let me just give you a slightly different breakdown on how, what that already means in terms of the payback. So based on those numbers, not including the gas or the petrol, the system right now, after four years, will have paid for itself in five years and nine months. So dropping down from that kind of 10 years and nine months in the year one down to five years and nine months, it's pretty much halved itself due to the slight increase at the beginning of 2022 in energy costs. I think when we look at this next year, you know, it's going to be crazy <laughs> because of the, you know, even with the price caps and stuff, it's gone up significantly. If we factor in those gas savings that we have, which I do think is a valid use case, the system paid to itself in four years and 10 months. So only 10 more months, the system has paid back itself and all of it is, is profit and really free electricity because um, obviously the system would have paid for itself. And then if we factor in the fact that we're not buying petrol anymore, but we are buying more electricity, then the system actually paid for itself um, in two years and six months. So that might be the slightly rose tinted glasses version, which I mentioned uh, each year but yeah I'm really happy that we went uh, and got solar panels definitely happy we got the battery so back to the kind of intro don't listen to people who haven't got solar haven't got electric vehicles have not got battery storage and never tried any of these things and just are anti whatever yes you're doing your bit for environment yes you're re reducing co2 levels but I think most people are doing this because it's going to save them money, give them some control over rising energy costs. And there is something kind of awesome about generating and using your own energy as opposed to, you know, giving it back to the grid. But even when you are giving it back to the grid, you know, you're helping. You're you know, helping balance the grid a little bit uh, and saving, you know, some of the production and everything. So I still think solar makes a lot of sense in the UK. Hopefully this four year update has made you realize that solar continues to, makes sense in the UK where it is always dull and crappy and rainy all the time as everyone says but it isn't really still really good generation I would get solar again um, and if you can afford it I think it's definitely worth considering getting solar and a battery obviously with the current climate I think it's harder to get panels and batteries at the moment just due to demand and obviously I think for the next four and a half years um, you know the government has cut uh, that on uh, solar PV products, which will increase the demand as well. It may have adjusted the price a little bit, but hope that helped. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing if you haven't done already. You can support the channel in other ways as well. If you look in the description, uh, you can buy me a coffee, buy me a beer, or kind of join and sign, sign up on YouTube or Patreon, or however you'd like to support the channel, or even just watching these videos is very much appreciated. Any questions or comments you have, please feel to leave them down in the comment section. I will read them and get back to you as soon as I can. But until the next video, take care of yourself and goodbye for now.